Welcome to Electron Online. In this video, let's explore how photons are actually absorbed by matter. Let's see here we have a photon that approaches an atom, and the question is how does that photon get absorbed? Well, it depends on three things. First of all, the amount of energy the photon has, and secondly, the photon always transfers either part or all of its energy to the electrons of the atoms rather than to the nuclei of the atoms. So the interaction between the photons and the atoms are through the interaction between the photons and the electrons. The other part of that mechanism depends upon what, how much energy there is. There's three different kinds of energy transfers from a photon to the electron. First of all, we have the photoelectric effect, which happens at low energies. When the photons tend to have low energies, the energy transfer tends to be to the electron. The electron typically absorbs all of the energy of the photon and the electron then zips off, either moving to a different energy level or is completely ionized from the atom itself. Secondly, as the energy of the photon is greater than small, let's say it now becomes a medium type of energy photon or a photon with a medium energy level, the next kind of energy transfer is to what we call the Compton scattering, where the photon zips past the electron, the electron is then pushed through the interaction in one direction, the photon is then pushed into a different reaction that would then be caused by the conservation of momentum, and the energy of the electron that comes off of the scattering is going to be smaller than the energy of the photon before the scattering. That difference in energy is then transferred to the electron. That's called the Compton scattering. And finally, if the photon has an interaction with an atom, but the photon has a very high amount of energy, enough to produce matter, then we can have a pair production energy transfer from the photon directly into matter. The kind of energies we're talking about is low energies are typically less than 10,000 electron volts. Medium energies are anywhere from 100,000 to a million electron volts. And high energies are considered to be greater than 10 million electron volts. Now you may say, well, wait a minute, aren't there gaps here? What about between 10,000 and 100,000? What about 1 million to 10 million? It turns out that within those intermediate ranges, there's an overlap. Some of the interaction could be due to the photoelectric effect, while other interactions could be Compton scattering, even though the energy level is the same. So there's going to be an overlap region where you could have either one or the other. Same between the medium energies here and high energies. You only need about one MeV to cause a pair production for a proton and an antiproton, although you probably expect a little bit more. Otherwise, you would not have a lot of kinetic energy pushing these off away from each other. But you don't need the full 10 MeV in order to accomplish that. So again, there'll be some overlap. Either you'll have what we call Compton scattering at very high energies, but still not high enough to make pair production, or sometimes it's just barely enough to make pair production, and you have a pair production event instead of a Compton scattering event. Another thing that we want to kind of look at is how do these photons interact with electrons? Because electrons are very small particles. If we try to estimate the size of an electron based upon a charge distribution, we know how much charge an electron has, and if we assume that that charge distribution is evenly distributed throughout the entire volume of the electron, and then we try to figure out how much energy it takes to distribute that much charge on, a, on an object the size of an electron, based upon that, we can then calculate from classical physics, from classical mechanics, classical electromagnetism, how big that electron would have to be. Of course, those assumptions may not necessarily lend to itself to giving us the right size of the electron because this is still bigger than the size of a proton and we don't expect an electron to be bigger than a proton. But it does put an upper bound to the size of the electron. And if we assume for a moment that this is the size of an electron, how big is a photon at these various energies? Well, it turns out at the energy level of 10,000 electron volts, the wavelength of a photon is about 1 times 10 to the minus 10 meters, which makes the wavelength about a million times the radius of an electron, even if it's an exaggerated size of an electron. So that means that the wavelength of photon is extremely large, and somehow through the interaction between that photon that zips by at the speed of light with the electron, the electron absorbs that energy from being knocked probably relatively gentle because of the very large wavelength, and then absorbs all that energy. At medium energies, at 100,000 to 1 million electron volts, 
the wavelength now shortens to about 1 times 10 to the minus 11 to 1 times 10 to the minus 12 meters, approximating the size of the electron a little bit more, but still quite a bit bigger than, before, than the electron size, 100,000 to 10,000 times the size of an electron, even at the exaggerated size. But the interaction is then, instead of being absorbed by the electron completely, it kind of ricochets off the electron. The electron goes flying in one direction, the photon goes flying in the other direction. Momentum is conserved, energy is conserved, but what happens is that the energy of the photon is decreased by the amount given to the electron, called the Compton scattering event. And finally, at very high energies, when the wavelength of the of the photon is only about a thousand times the size of an, elect of an electron based on, on these exaggerated sizes, then when it interacts with the nucleus of a heavy atom, it could cause a pair production event to occur. So in either case, no matter what the event is, no matter what the transfer of energy mechanism is, the photon wavelength is always a much larger than the size of the electron, but it turns out that the smaller the the wavelength becomes the more energy is contained within the photon, the more readily it then goes from a photoelectric effect to the Compton scattering to eventually the pair production. So that's kind of an overview of how energy absorbed from a photon. Now in the next video we're going to take a look a little bit more at the intermediate regions and how one goes to another and also how the mechanism will change depending upon the actual size of the nucleus of the atom because the way the photons interact with matter depends not only on the energy of the photon, but also on the mass of the nuclei of the atoms that it interacts with. Regardless of that the energy is carried over to the electrons at all times, the mass of the nucleus of the atom that it interacts with also plays a part in which of these transfers of energy is going to take place. So let's take a look at the next video and get a better understanding yet about how energy is transferred from a photon to the electrons.